Hello, so our clear target for this half term is decimal number bonds to 1 and 10. So this is your homework sheet from last week, which was working on decimal number bonds to 1. So this is using your number bonds to 10 to help you with your number bonds to 1. And you have had quite a few activities based on these for the last two weeks. This week and for the following three weeks, we are developing onto decimal number bonds to 10 as you can see here. So I'm just going to work through a few examples with you and a few different strategies that you can use to help you work out these decimal number bonds to 10. So um, one way that you could work it out is using your number bonds to 100, which we did focus on at the beginning of the year in September. So you would look at this as 36 and this as 100, and you would see what you needed to get for to get to 100 from 36 so you do 100 subtract 36 and that would give you the missing number and then you put your decimal point back in or you can keep it as a decimal and think of it as your number bonds to 10 and to 9 so in your units column you need to make 10 so what are you going to need to get from 6 to 10 that will be 4 and what are you need and then in your tens column you are going to try and get to 9. So what are you going to need to work to get from 3 to 9? It will be 6. So your answer is 6.4. So you've got 3.6 of 6.4 is 10. Another way that you can use do this calculation, a different strategy that you can use, is a number line. So at this end of my number line, I've got the number that I'm starting at, which is 3.6. And at this end of my number line, I've got the number that I'm trying to get to, which is 10. And I'm going to do a series of jumps along my number line to get to my final number. And then across the top of my number line, that will show me what our missing numbers are. So if I'm going to start at 3.6, the nearest whole number that I'm going to jump to is 4. To get from 3.6 to 4, I need to complete a jump of plus 0.4. That will get us from 3.6 to 4 because 6 to 10 would be 4. So we're just dividing our answer by 10. And then to get from 4 to 10, because I've got two whole numbers now, to get from 4 to 10, I'm going to do a really big jump all the way. And that's going to be plus 6.4. So my answer, my missing number, would be the 6 at the point 4, which is 6.4, which is the same answer that I got using a different strategy. Sometimes your questions might be written using an inverse. This is where we start with our largest number, so that would be 10, because this is our total that we are always aiming to get to. So we start at 10 minus our missing number equals 7.8. So you're going to do exactly the same strategies to find this missing number, but your calculation is just written a different way around. Don't let this throw you off, because actually we still need to do the same calculation. So this time we're going to look at our 7.8 and see what we need to get to 10. And we can either do that using the method that I used here, counting up to 10 and then 9, or we can use our number line method, or you could use column subtraction but that's a little bit tricky when you've got zeros on the end so to get from 8 up to 10 I'm going to need 2 and to get from 7 up to 9 I'm also going to need 2 so my answer would be 2.2 .2. and if I did the number line for that question I would find hopefully that I would get the same answer 2.2 .2. okay so in your homework over the next few weeks you're going to have quite a few questions and different activities to help you practice these types of decimal number bonds working with the answer to 10. So we've moved on from getting the answer of 1 to up to getting the answer to 10. The easiest step uh, strategy that I can give you to help is to think of your number bonds to 100 because you are really, really good at those, so use those to help you with these. Okay.